Hello, everyone. I could see you in my chat. <clears throat> I see Christina and Teresa and April and Christine, I think it is. And let's see who else. This is what happened to me last time. I couldn't move my comments up and down and it was so like frustrating to me. I'm waiting for, oh, here it is. Okay, I just have to be patient, I guess, and hover over. Jill, hi, Jill. It's late tonight for me. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm going to get started just like in another minute or two. Oh, good. Okay. Hi, Linda. Hi, Kathy. Oh, Kathy, you're here. I'm in my jammies. Okay, so I'm going to get started. Oh, they're still coming in. I have um, behind the scenes photos that I wanted to share. That's exactly what I'm doing tonight. Just sharing all of them and some ideas I have about each of them and um, some stuff that was shared with me. And then I am going to share out. Look, at these are all my notes. I have, I get so many like comments and I try to remember um, who says what. And there's someone I cannot figure out who shared something with me. So I'm going to give them a chance, I hope, to see this and then maybe they'll uh, leave a comment later. But um, <clears throat> I have one, two, three really cool wish lists that people were sharing with me. So I'll do that at the end. So what's going to happen is I have to share the photos by going into my Google Slides. One day I will have a better way to do it. Hi, I'm from Iowa, I'm late to the party. No, you aren't, Susan, we're just getting started. <laughs> and um, I have to go back and forth to share so then I could come back and see what you're saying and we can talk. So um, until I have a better setup, this is how I have to do it. Hi, Barbara, hi, Fran. Gladys is here, hello. Margie, hi everyone. My, I was just gonna say Margie, I would recognize your name because my mother's name was Maggie, but her her uh, siblings called her Margie. Um, my first time on a live chat, so looking forward to it. a big fan of When Calls the Heart. Well, that's a lot of pressure. I don't know <laughs> how exciting tonight's going to be. <laughs> Usually it's just so much fun to hear what everyone has to say. Yes, welcome Margie. Okay, so I'm gonna get started. I wanted to talk, well, first of all, I think some of you know that I had like a fangirl moment of all moments last Saturday, not yesterday, but last week when um, Peter DeLuise, for whatever reason, hopped on um, Instagram and directly sent me stuff. I was like, what? Because I have loved that man forever. So I was so excited. I felt all important for all of two minutes. And um, I have some of the pictures here. They're not special pictures that only I got to see. They're on Twitter. Anybody can see them. So um, there's a reason for it. I had done a, and if you haven't seen it, you can go back later to see it. But I had done a uh, prediction video about Fiona and Faith and where they live. And when I say live, I don't mean just in their home, you know, where they work, where they spend most of the time, the most of the scenes that we get to see them in. And I was really paying attention to the to the barbershop because it was new. And I felt like it was going to stay around for a while. And it's going to be like a hot spot for season nine. It's a great place for gossip to, you know, be heard and shared. And I'm thinking Rosemary's very much going to like it. She's going to think it's like her link to what's going on in the town or one of her spots. So I was trying to hope to glean some information about the character Fiona, because I think you've heard me say this before. And if not, oh, well, now you hear it. Um, she is one of the main characters. She's become more and more prominent in the storylines that we have not met a single soul or really heard about just recently. We always knew she had a lot of brothers and she was from San Francisco, but just recently we heard she had a fiance. She was explaining that I think either to Clara or Faith. I think it was Faith. 
And that's it. Everybody else we've seen, um, the parents or um, a relative or a friend or something, but we have nothing. She's like a mystery and she's going to have a big part this season. Um, I say that with confidence because we all watched. She's going to, she's like in everything. She's in the center of town. She has that whole pipeline thing going and she has an investor coming. So I think the investor is a big deal. I don't think it's just going to be an investor. I think it's going to be someone that probably is either going to cause a lot of trouble in some way or has connections that we don't even realize with other characters in the, um, in the storylines. So I wanted to find out what all the pictures were in her place. And the one picture I couldn't figure it out. And I had a feeling that it really wasn't of her family because it looked like a group of men. I thought, oh, wouldn't that be great if it was her father and her brothers? And there was someone who helped me out because I put it out there. And I'm going to spell her name only on purpose because I don't like to pronounce someone's name incorrectly. And I do not know how to pronounce it. So it's capital F-A-I-S-O-N. And she allowed me to um, find some information on it. It's from 1895 and I'll show it to you in a minute. And it's a famous picture. It's of course from France and it's about men getting in line to have a shave, which we know she has that whole French background, especially from San Francisco. So that would be appropriate. It has nothing to do with her family. So in the end, what did we learn? Nothing. She's still a mystery, which just makes me more excited for season nine, because I really think that when we do find out about her past, why it has been mystery, I don't think it's just a, like a, a mistake or something that just happened inadvertently because, you know, writers do not do things um, by accident. So I'm thinking that there's going to be a wow when that happens. What do you all think? She's the new Abigail. Okay. What do you think, though? Do you think that Fiona, like whoever is her investor and whoever her family is, is somehow going to have an impact on the town? Anybody? Look. Raise your hand. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> hmm. I know there's a delay. So I am going to scooch over and show you some pictures so you know what I'm talking about. So because I was so interested in it, Peter um, sent me just more pictures. That's what it was. And they actually gave me the print on the wall, like a picture of the print on the wall, which was good. And I am going to share all of that with you right now. And you may have seen it. So I'm just going to go over it with you because some people were thinking that there is something special he did give me, but I'll share that in a minute if you haven't already seen it already. Um, and it's okay. Here we go. Let me see. Hello. Hello, Clarence. Maybe Lucas's family has some connection to Fiona. You know what, Kathleen? That is exactly what I have thought. And others have said the same thing. I And I don't think Lucas realizes it either. I think it'll be a surprise. And I'm wondering if it has to do with their fathers. Okay, I'm going to hit present. And so off to the side, you can see my, like it was blurred out. I took a big screenshot of that, trying to figure it out. And then, as you can see, it says Peter DeLuise at About Hallmark. That's me on Twitter. He showed me what the print was. And then, of course, I had F-A-I-S-O-N. Um, she... Um, and I'm not being rude. I just don't want to mispronounce her name. She um, also told me the same information as Peter shared. So she was like back up, which is good. So in a nutshell, there wasn't really any more that I could glean about her. So um, he sent me these pictures too. And um, they're, and you, they're all over. Anybody can have them. The thing that stood out to me the most about this um, I find it really interesting. They have all the herbs and whatnot in there and the, the attention to detail. So if I feel like if they're going to be paying this much attention to detail, it's not just to be in the background. I think we're going to have quite a few scenes between her and Hickam. It's almost like her office. I know Hickam might be using Henry's office, although Henry's back. And um, I feel like, you know, there's going to be a lot of activity. Like I said, a gossip central kind of thing. And I also wanted you to pay attention to the outside flowers. They're very springish and summer. And I'm going to talk about that in a, in a few minutes. So I'm going to move over to this picture here. So this is Minnie, of course, you can see. And she is on another vehicle. There are a lot of vehicles um, in Hope Valley now. And I've discussed my idea about that. I mean, we're moving through um, the, into the century. We're going into 1920. We're almost there. And you can tell by, this is why I chose it, not just by the vehicles, but also by Minnie's hairstyle, 
her dress, she's really fashionable, like um, Clara is and um, uh, Fiona is. And this is making me think that we're getting closer to 1920 and something someone brought up that was really interesting. On this, unfortunately, no matter how much I have looked and tried to figure this out, I have not been able to see, um, I have not her name, um, who it was that mentioned this. They were wondering if they were going to bring up the Spanish flu because that was 1918 to 1920. It did affect, of course, Canada, like it affected most of the world. And maybe they won't call it the Spanish flu, but it would be something that would hit the town, especially when newcomers are going to be there. And it would make a bigger part for the infirmary, maybe even a reason for Carson to come back, even if it's just for, you know, the last few episodes. So a lot is going on, I think, where it's sort of like the turn of, you know, the decade for them. And um, someone else had a really cool idea, Laura, S-A-R-C-H-A-O. She said she would love to see, this is her wish list. She would love to see, since we're getting close to 1920, instead of a Christmas special, a New Year's Eve special, like they did a few, you know, way back when Jack was still there, but more like a Gatsby flair, which I think would be cool. Um, okay, I am going to stop sharing for a minute just to hop back on and see how everybody is and what's going on. I have wondered if her um, investor is her former fiance or someone else, a family member. Margie, that is what a lot of us are thinking. And because she does that, she never says he or she, which I find interesting. So I would love it if it were a female. You know, she's so outspoken and strong. I'm wondering if she has like a mom or somebody who's just as outspoken and as strong as her. No behind the scene pics of Clara and Jesse. No, um, not at all. But on his Instagram, he was golfing and he was um, visiting with his, the person who played Kevin. I don't know what's going on with them. I don't think that they're not going to be on the show. Um, I just think they're maybe coming in later. And there could be a whole host of reasons why. I mean, we don't know. It could have more to do with the actress than the actor. Um, I have no information on that. But that is something fun to look into and research because I do love them. They're like a mirror image, like a younger version of what goes on between, I'm not saying they have the same personalities, but Rosemary and Lee, they're a good um, reflection of each other. I like, I like that chemistry of that foursome. Okay, I'm not sure how Fiona will figure into season nine. I need to contemplate it. Okay, Linda, I, I think she's going to have a big voice. I, and I said that in my prediction video of where she lives. I don't know how she is not going to because there's a lot going on with the town itself, not so much all the individual stories that's going to happen too, but the a town, just like before when they were having trouble with the railroad. So I think, you know, they're going to have to come together and she has her hand in quite a bit, especially if she's trying to do that whole bike pipeline with, um, with uh, Hickam. Okay. Um, I like Clara and Jesse. I do too. Anyone else? I'm just thinking Clara and Jesse said, Oh, I know. I know. I think it'll be okay. They could be coming in at the end. Maybe they'll all ride in on the coach, in the coach stagecoach together. It'll be Clara and Jesse and Carson, and they'll all get out. Woohoo! It'll be at the end of the season. Who knows? Okay, so I wanted to move on. Now, again, it was Laura who suggested that New Year's Eve party. What do you think of that? Like, instead of maybe a Christmas one, because we're so close into the year 1920, that we would they would have like a um, a New Year's Eve party. Maybe if not this year for the next season, that would be pretty cool, right? And you could like Gatsby looking and you could see it in their fashions already, which I think is amazing. There are these two sisters, sidebar on this, who are on Facebook and I forget, not on Facebook, they're on Instagram and I forget what their title is. They're young and they do all this artwork. They did a drawing of Fiona's shoes that I want to purchase from them so I can hang it on the wall of my office which is a disaster and still under construction. But um, you should, I'm, I wanna have them on. There are two young girls and I forget what it's called. You should follow them on Instagram because their artwork, if you're on it, is amazing. Um, hopefully I will figure it out before we are done. Okay, um, Jill, what's the idea? What's a good idea? Tell me. What do you mean by good idea before I move on? 
Are you are you talking about what someone else has said? I have wondered if their investors are former fiance or someone else, a family member. We talked about that, Margie. Okay, so while I'm waiting for a hot minute to see if Jill has anything to add to my question. Um, okay. I saw a picture of Lucas and Elizabeth behind the scenes. Oh, don't you worry, Kathleen. We're going to be talking about that, but I'm saving that that deliciousness for the end. Um, Micah, I hope that there is going to be a big showdown in the saloon <laughs> between Wyman and the Pinkertons and the main characters in Hope Valley. I have been saying that, that there is definitely going to be a showdown of some sort. Oh, I've got some deliciousness about that too. Okay, so I'm going to move on. And um, let's see, I talked about oh, the cars and going into, okay. Oh, the baseball card. All right. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to share a few a few more things. I won't be able to see what you're all writing until I come back. So before I do, it says, I wonder how Bill takes the news about Elizabeth and Lucas. Oh, I think Bill is going to be fine about that. Um, since Elizabeth and Lucas both love books so much, it would be not be surprising for them to have some type of themed party like The Great Gatsby. Hmm. But was The Great Gatsby The Great Gatsby yet? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to hit share again. And then I will show you my other behind the scenes stuff. And here we go. Share. All right, so there's Minnie. She's so gorgeous. And I love I love the softness of her voice when she speaks. She actually has an accent. I'm not quite sure where she's from. One you might all know. I forget, but she has such a beautiful voice, like just just a speaking voice. I love it. Okay, so here we go. So mm, this is Peter DeLuise. Um and I'm showing this because we have seen, this is an up close picture of Lucas's office. And early on, he shared these. And early on, people were like, oh, did he sell the saloon? Oh my goodness, did he sell it? And I was like, no, he didn't. But of course, people were like, no, I think he sold it. And then we noticed that when he was showing the new pictures of the office, that it was not the same as the pictures we saw from the first, uh, from season eight, it had additional pieces in it. So I was like, this tells me that the saloon was not sold. It is still Lucas's saloon. And if you're gonna go crazy on a set like this, I doubt that they're going to break it down and not use it again. So if you look up in the corner, one of the things that I noticed, there's several things that are actually on one of the fun fan pages. I don't know if it was the Chris McNally fan page or if it was, um, the uh, When Calls the Heart, uh, the Lucas and Elizabeth page. If you're not on them and you love those characters, you should get on, it's on Facebook. Anyway, someone put like the two pictures side by side, the first picture they gave of the office and the second of this, and then you had to see what you could, um, what was different. Remind me of something we used to do years ago in grade school. So anyway, up in this corner are these um, baseball cards. And there's a whole story about that. And I won't get into that today, but there is, I already did a video on it if you want to catch it. But the first time we saw the office, the only baseball card there that we could see was this one. And then there was more added. And you could see these two down here are the same as this one. And then they added some things here. So I was like, oh, they added more. And no one could figure out who that face was. And you heard me talk about this. I talked about it a couple of times. Um, but people are still asking. So I'm going to say it one more time. I looked at it and I thought, you know what, this, I did the research. It doesn't match anybody. I even had some people like Deborah and Janine Marie help. My dad helped my friend, Jason, who was like an aficionado about um, history of baseball. Everybody was out there helping. And I was like, you know what, that is not even a real baseball player because that looks like handsome Peter DeLuise when he was just a boy. And I talked to, um, I guessed it and I sent a message to the uh, set decorator and she said I was correct. So Peter gifted me a picture of it and that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> look at him. <laughs> That's he, him when he was young. And if you look up in the corner, you can really see the resemblance. And they called him Peter Plum's De, uh, DeLuise. So it, it, it's really not a real card. It's just silliness that he did. Okay, now I'm going to move on. And that clears that up. Okay, now I'm back to the uh, flowers outside. So I wanted you to look at this because 
it is like the setting and the setting is important because there's always a time hop when we um, start back up with When Calls the Heart. We used to get a, um, a special episode on Christmas and it would be about Christmas or New Year's Eve like it was um, one of the earlier uh, episodes. We didn't because of COVID get that. So <clears throat> when we left, I, I don't know if we are this year, but we definitely or this season. We're getting 12 um 12 uh scene and not scenes 12 episodes i'm sorry i'm tired so um i was paying attention to when we we left and that would have been fall she was getting the room ready and she was going back to school and it wasn't that much into fall maybe a few weeks and that says to me okay well then are they going to time hop right over the winter into spring and then something happened. All the signs were there that said, yes, it would be spring and summer. And you could see just right here. I mean, this is definitely not fall and this sure isn't winter. And this happened and this was an accident. So um, Pascal, as you can see, P hunting up in the corner. I don't know if you could see that. She was, uh, there was terrible rainstorm there and she was filming and showing little things. And you know how um, we hardies are, you can stop and screenshot stuff. I couldn't even find my screenshot. This actually, I want to give her credit is off of one of the fan sites and Amy, her name is Amy. She screenshot it and she was circling certain things, but the circling I want to pay attention to is the mercantile. There's the blue bunting, which could mean election day. Um, but it could also mean because it's blue, it could be decoration for, let's say, a holiday like Hanukkah. Because if you look closely in the window is a some kind of poster or something of a menorah. So, I mean, Yost is Jewish um, or can be Jewish, could be German, too. But um, there is a menorah in the window. So now I'm like, well, here's winter. And I'm thinking, OK, so maybe they do a time hop and go from fall to spring and whatever happened, you know how she does, um, she writes in her journal, Elizabeth, and does a voiceover, and then keep up with the spring, summer, and then we would go to winter and it would end. I mean, that's a lot. I don't know if they've gone through that many seasons, but I want to say something. I'm going to stop sharing and come back because I'm going to say something that Chris said not too long ago. Um, it looks like him. I hope we get some real kissing this season. Oh, you're off topic. Stay with me. All right. No, not Gatsby. Wasn't until 1925. Yes, but something similar. I knew what you meant, Margie. I really love his office. So happy we get to see more. There's a new sign on, 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 on new behind the building. Yes. No Christmas movie because of the 12 episodes. Yes. But I want to talk about that. Getting back to Spanish flu, if they chose to go, okay, I'm going to hold on to that. So I'm going to talk about this timeline. Um, somehow they get to winter. Somehow they're getting to winter from that, from what we just saw. Now, I know that they're probably in, I think they're doing episodes eight and nine or seven and eight. There's, they're way up there. And what's interesting is um, Chris did an interview and remember when he was in charge of the festival for Christmas and it was the beginning of season seven and they were asking him, uh, well, Chris wasn't, Lucas was, they were asking Chris some questions and he said, listen, it was such a blur. He said, because we filmed, um, blocks for episodes one, two, three, four, five, six. I think he said, we stopped. We did the Christmas special, half of it, then picked back up and did 8, 9, 10, 11, and then ended with filming the Christmas special again. So they don't film things in order. And um, somehow we're going to get winter. So I'm curious to know, are we going to maybe, even though it's not going to be a Christmas special, are they going to start episode one with a Christmas special just in February? I don't know. Or just, you know, go through the seasons and show that it's Christmas. But, you know, that Menara's there. It's wintertime. I just find it interesting. I, I don't, I'm interested in what the time hop is. Okay, before I move on with um, the time frame, I wanted to... Does anybody else find that interesting? I want to know because... If there's a big time hop, I want it to be that in my head, you know, people have moved on. Lucas and um, Nathan are becoming friends. Lucas and Elizabeth have, you know, really grown in their friendship. Um, whoever is supposed to be hiding out in that cabin is there and it's going to be revealed, that kind of thing. Um, there's a new sign on um, a new building behind uh, the saloon. 
I hope we get some real kissing this season. Of course we were in that office. It looks like him. No Christmas movie because of the 12 episodes. Getting back to the Spanish flu. Okay. If they chose to go with that storyline, it would be a good excuse for the cast to be wearing masks. Oh my goodness, this is true, because they did then. I've seen pictures from that era and people were wearing, wearing masks. It's true. But you know how sensitive they are to things? They might not. They might do a sickness, but not call it that. Who knows? Oh, Caroline, you're from Brazil. That always blows my mind when I have people from all over the place. Thank you for tuning in. Oh, maybe Thanksgiving. Okay. All right, that would be nice. I read an article, don't remember where, but they said season nine will have 12 episodes. Yes, Micah, they do. We know that. Uh, actually, Elizabeth said, Elizabeth said it. <laughs> you know who I mean. Aaron said it. Aaron said we will definitely have 12 episodes, but didn't give any hints about if there was a Christmas special or not or anything like that. Okay, so um, I'm going to move on and I'm going to talk about... The night scenes, because it's driving me wild. All right, I'm going to go share again. Here I go. I'm going back. Try not to throw myself out. Here we go. All right. Um, oh, I don't want to keep us too long because it's getting late. All right, uh, where are we? Okay, so I'm going to move on. And so we have different, I mean, different uh, directors um, that Miss Divine here, she is one of the directors. She's done. She's on to her next um, movie, but she did a couple of episodes. And a lot of what she had is that is at night. And if you look at the first picture, this is just the town. And over here, it's the woods up somehow. And uh, someone had pointed out that it's very, if you see this green color back there, it, it's nothing. It's when I was um, uploading it, it was there and it came became even greener. I think it might be a piece of equipment from um, the, 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 the crew people. Anyway, it looks like it's in a wooded area. Someone had pointed out something and thought maybe it was close to Elizabeth's house. But we're going to move on. And this is them showing, this is Peter now, showing how they tent an area to if you're just in the... Um, like doorway and you want to have a conversation like it's at nighttime. That's how they make it look it's like it's nighttime. Then Pascal, she had a picture of them in the woods again, and it's at night. The same with the gentleman who plays um, Wyman. He had something very similar to that. And then again, here's the saloon at night. And um, I'm pointing out all of these because I went back through season eight and yes, there's about four or five scenes that in some way, shape or form have night scenes. Some have way more than others, but for, for some reason they have quite a few and they're in the woods. So I'm thinking who lives in the woods and it's that mystery cabin that, um, you know, first was Henry's and then Henry sold it to um, the Canfields and then the Canfields moved out to live up close by. And now we know it's being um, protected by the Pinkerton. So I, I think there's like, again, I always said an elevated um, level of danger in season nine. And I think a lot's going to be going on in the woods, in the dark at night. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's agreeing with me, but I think, I kind of think that's fun though. I think there's going to be more nighttime stuff than normal. And I also think there might be a lot of nighttime stuff. And this is just selfish thinking of me, for me. I'm thinking this because Elizabeth's a working mom. She's at school all day. Lucas is, you know, doing his thing. When are they going to really see each other in the evening? It's not like Lee and Rosemary where they have different schedules. They could see each other in the course of the day. The only time that Lucas and Elizabeth would see each other is if he popped over when she was having lunch with, the, you know, the kids. But that would be just for a few minutes. So that's why I'm thinking there might be a lot more nighttime scenes because that whole relationship is being explored. And then it just fits in so nicely with all the drama and, you know, what Whatever underhandedness could be going on in um, Hope Valley and in the woods. Okay, so um, next up, talk about underhandedness. Uh, and then I will stop and I will hop on so I could see if anyone has any questions. There's Bill and um, they're transporting uh, someone or a couple of someones. And he's always got his suit on, always looking very official. Last time he was in a suit riding on a horse with his gun. He showed some behind the scene pictures there. 
And again, over here, here's Nathan and Nathan is dressed down. Now, of course, we always see Nathan dressed down for a little bit at some point. Look how handsome he looks. Look at that hair. I mean, there's such handsome men on this show. All right. And then I'm going to go over to here and you'll see Nathan, of course, has a totally different outfit on. Bill has a whole other suit on and they're just fooling around, of course. But again, the two of them together and he's dressed down. Again, another scene, the two of them in that green like that green shadow is from me uploading. And um, there, I have no idea what Nathan has on, but again, they're together. And I, I feel like the two of them are working undercover. And I know I brought this up a millions of times and um, I'll be so mad if I'm wrong. <laughs> but I remember when um, Kevin was saying that the writers called him up and said, we have some really cool plans for you. And he thought it was going to be great. Like it sounded like an adventure and he really couldn't say much. So I really think he's going to be undercover. He's been undercover before. And um, I think that that's what's going to happen um, in the next season. All right. And he and Bill are going to be working closely. I know they have a good relationship, but I think they're going to have an even stronger relationship. I said early on um, in my predictions that Nathan needs a friend. He really does. And I do think that he and Lucas are going to become very good friends over time. But someone said, oh, he, no, they didn't want that. And I didn't care what they had to say. But um, it's Bill and he, they're right. He and Bill are friends. And I think it, um, because they have, the same interests, they protect the town. And I think that friendship is going to be even stronger. Um, I am going to do some episodes where Bill is going to help Nathan learn how to cook. So when he has a lady friend, he can impress her, but that's a whole different video. Okay. I'm going to move on. And before we get to that, I'm just going to hop back. I hope I'm not making anyone dizzy and um, stop, stop sharing. Uh, sharing. Google. Okay. Stop sharing. Okay. Maybe Nathan was, um, quit being a Mountie. No, he's not Miriam. He would not quit being a Mountie. I love him being a Mountie. He's, he's good. He's a good guy. Bill does not look happy. Um, in that one clip he was, he was actually joking around. It's just the way the shot was and in, in the way they screenshot it. Love all our cast members. They're all great. Everything. Um, Evening dates with, yes, Elizabeth and Lucas, really? When when are they? They have to have evening dates. They're going to be putting baby Jack to bed, and then they're going to have evening dates. So hence, they'll be out in the out in the nighttime a lot. Okay. All right. So let's see this. Or the menorah might be a present to honor Jewish guests in Hope Valley. Um, Linda, that's true. But um, so I don't know whoever is Jewish on here or not. You don't just put the menorah out though, like to do that. I get what you're saying that that's like, it's not even a high holiday, but um, it's something that, you know, they put out for the holiday. I don't know. I just feel like that it's winter time. That's a, you know, there we're rolling into the winter time. Um, hope Lucas and Rosemary become closer friends. Um, hope Lucas and Rosemary become, I feel them as friends uh, would be so funny. Oh, I, I do because they're going to be um, vying for Elizabeth's attention. And you know how Rosemary is. So I think there's going to be a whole host of funnies with that. Um, okay. Anyone else have any? I wonder how Jack Jr. is doing with Lucas's love seeing him in the house. Oh, I know. A lot of people have predictions about that. I do too. And um, someone sent to me um, a behind the scenes shot of when... Um, Chris McNally was in the, the, he plays a sailor, went right out of my head, sailing to love. Is that what it is? And he, behind the scenes, he was actually holding someone's baby, a little girl. I think it was a little girl. And they were so impressed because um, the baby normally doesn't go to anyone and they took right to him. So he's like with also with dogs and animals, he's like that gentle soul. So I think the actual actors are going to do very well with, with him. I just can't wait to see what the interaction is like. I think it's going to be fun. All right. I'm looking at everyone's little things. Oh, we got some new comments here. All right. Where are they? Hello. Oh, here's where it does its freezing thing. And then I can't see maybe, oh, that's you with Nathan. I don't know. It freezes up and then I can't see what people are saying. And then, then I get frustrated and annoyed. Okay. So I am going to move on to the last few parts and then I'll do my shout out. So I'm going to share for the last time. I hope I'm not making anyone dizzy. 
And here we go. Okay. So if you notice, you will see um, behind Henry is the Valley Voice sign, and it's attached, and it's the new sign, and it's above um, Lee's office. A while back, I had some unanswered questions, and one of them was, where were they going to put the Valley Voice? Would they Were they going to be able to fit in there? And it looks like, yes, they're going to be in there. I had predicted there, which would be hilarious to share space with, you know, Lee and his workers, especially if it's Jesse, she'll probably drive him insane. But then there was also the option of there's a room off of, if he became mayor, there is a room off of that whole judge area. But then again, maybe the mayor's office, which is now the judge's chambers, is going to have to be shared. You know how Bill is. So I can't imagine Bill and Lee, if Lee wins, having to share that space. That would make for some hilarity. But as we can see, the question has been answered and the Valley Voice will be located on that large desk <laughs> like we saw in season eight inside of Lee's office, right in the center of town. And then up next is this. <laughs> so this picture was shared by Chris McNally. And um, those of you that are Luca Beth uh, fans, you know that people have been asking and asking and asking and asking for a picture of the two of them. And if you're not familiar with this, somebody typed it in earlier. There's this funny movie called Zoolander. And um, when they make silly faces, the actor, and they do like a, a walk off when they're going down the runway together. And that's kind of like what these two are doing. And I love it. But here's my prediction. It's not about the uh, characters. It's about the actors. I don't think that they did this like accidentally. So if you, I mean, maybe that pose, yes. But if you see, of course, neither of them took this picture. Chris didn't, nor did Aaron. And um, there it is. And someone took it and Chris, anybody could have posted it. Whoever took it could have posted if it was Pascal, if it was a crew member, anybody could have posted it, a director, but they made Chris, Chris posted it. And then um, Aaron reposted it and tagged, said, thank you to Chris. Um, I think they're testing the waters. They're trying to figure out how we're going to react and what it, what, like what's out there, because you know, there was a lot of negativity out there and, um, I am absolutely pleased. Do not think I am taking credit for anything here. Cause I know how things could get twisted around. I have talked to, um, Chris's publicist and about a week ago, maybe a week and a half ago, I did a follow-up phone call with her and just chatted about how if he's checking social media because the fans are working really hard to put positivity out there and we see more positivity than negativity. And he's not very, he doesn't usually look at social media. He said when he is in submersed in a role because it's such a sidetrack for him and it, it hurts him, even though it shouldn't. And he doesn't want it to take away from the character that he's playing. Cause he really like gets himself involved in it. So, um, I'm not surprised because he was on, um, he did something last week too. And then he posts this. And if you look, the last time I looked and my numbers are going to be more, not less. I have to look real quick on social media. I have to find it. Aaron had over 22,000 likes and Chris on his was uh, over 13,000 likes. And they had, he had about four, over 400 posts and comments under there. And I went through every one of them and there were like two that were negative. So this is big. I love this because this tells me season nine is just going to be wow. And then I saw some ridiculousness on, it's called, I'm going to stop this, on, um, it's called Heavy on Hallmark. It's on Facebook. And then they have some clickbait thing on YouTube saying, oh, should it, should When Close the Heart be canceled? And people are thinking that Hallmark's asking that question. Hallmark did not ask that question. Heavy on Hallmark is some news, whatever, junky thing. And um, my answer was, that's nonsense. No, it's not going to be canceled. It's going to be bigger, be bigger than it was this last season. And that's pretty big. Okay. All right. I want to see what everyone is saying and why this freezes up on me. I don't know. And I am trying to play around with it to make sure it's okay. Um, until I can figure out how to make it work. 
I just have to keep on going. Okay, so it's getting late and I wanted to do my shout outs. I appreciate everyone that is here. And I wanted to talk about Arlene Eisenberg. She put on a wish list something really cool. She wishes that Elizabeth, um, when she has, it, this has to do with uh, Elizabeth and Lucas and baby Jack. She Her wish is that when Elizabeth struggles to keep Jack's um, memories alive for little Jack, um, that somehow, some way, she uses it as a stepping stone to build a bond between Lucas and baby Jack. So she's hoping that in the storylines, they'll see that connection. Like he doesn't know his father at all. And Lucas is sensitive and the kind enough that he will definitely help with that and, and, and keeping it alive. And he always has really cool creative ideas. So thank you, Arlene. I'm hoping we see that as well. And Sharon Norton, she says, um, oh, I love this. She's hoping that Elizabeth, Elizabeth's first book that Jack published for her would somehow, like Lucas would help her get it to be published for real and have a picture in there for of Jack and then dedicate it to little Jack and it would be a great memory for him or um, maybe have it leather bound and keep it as a memory and a legacy for him, which I thought that would be so cool and symbolic and sweet. And then we also have, oh, oh, Lynn. Lynn said she would like to see, um, oh, and this is true. She would like to see Lucas involved with the school children somehow. That would get daytime, daytime time for Lucas and Elizabeth. If he somehow, you know, was involved with a library project or something that has to do with the children, that would be cool. So that that is on that is on their wish list. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Arlene. And thank you, Sharon. And there is someone out there who shared um, some really cool information with me. And I said I was sorry because I could not remember what your name was. And it was the whole thing about the Spanish flu. Okay. So um, I still can't figure out why this freezes. I'm going to try one last time. And then um, I guess we'll have to you know, end, and I might be able to see better that way. Oh, this is driving me insane. You have no idea. All right, hold on. Please, please work. Why it freezes? I'm going to have to call up the software, my software people. So I can't scan down to see anyone's comments after Miriam. And it says I have new comments and it just freezes up. Yep, which is annoying. All right. Okay. Thank you for tuning in. Um, once I tune out, then I will be able to see your comments and I will continue. Oh, oh, just a quick note. I wanted to say thank you. I opened up a, um, a store, an online store, and I have um, a couple of graphic designers making things for me. And we just for now threw up my logo and I think you can get, not that I picked it out, but the store itself has mugs and journals and t-shirts and hoodies. I mean, they have a whole bunch of stuff. It's called Tee Public. I put the link in here somewhere in the um, description. And I got all these notifications. I'm like, oh no, what did I do wrong? And I looked down and people started buying stuff. I think half of it was my family. <laughs> but thank you. That's so nice. All right. Okay. Um, I'm going to end here and then I'll be able to see what everyone else was saying. And then I will chat with you that way. All right. You have a good night. Good night, everyone. I'll just wait to you say your good nights. <laughs> it drives me insane. <laughs>